and the parties consented to temporary custody being placed with the then temporary guardian. Hello, okay, now I could hear you guys. Good morning, I'm so sorry, I thought it was tomorrow. Yeah, well, the, the bad thing about being late, the good thing for us is you get to buy us all pizza for being late, so we get lunch <laughs> for free. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But seriously, you need to. Listen, I know judges who lock the doors of their courtrooms when it's time and they don't let people in. And if they're late, they just don't get heard. They yes. can close on without them. So I'm, sometimes I think I'm too liberal because I give people a chance to show up late and maybe I shouldn't, but I did. So okay. try not to do that again because you may be left behind because I have I had a hearing in Superior Court uh, last Thursday and the people showed up and I'd already heard the case without them. Oh, no. Okay. So, Sorry about that. that. Good morning. All right. We're conducting this hearing by Zoom, and we have several people. We have um, the mother who I was just speaking with, Ms. Rodriguez. Her yes. attorney, Ms. Evans Battle, is here. Uh, the current temporary custodian, Christina Valentine, is here with her lawyer, Ms. Pulst. My Pulst, how do you pronounce it? like what the doctor checks on your wrist, Your Honor. So you had it. Oh, okay. The attorney and guardian at Lydum for the minor child, Ms. Uh, Miller. Child is five. Did you excuse the child, Ms. Miller? <clears throat> I did not, but um, but he's I, here. Is he there? Okay. Yeah, he's here. He's just in another room. Come here, Mark. But I, I don't need to see him right yeah. now. Oh, okay. Room. He can be in another room. Okay. If, if we need to talk to him, or if she needs to talk to okay. him. Um. <laughs> And Ms. Brandon was introduced as the um, child's therapist. Um, Don't call that. All right. So I need, I heard somebody's voice that I don't know. Uh, Jessica Coleman, she's the program director, is here with me. Okay. Um, That's me. Sorry. Ms. Brandon and Ms. Coleman, Ms. Brandon, I'm going to put you in the waiting room so you don't hear what's testified to. And that's what's called the rule of sequestration, which is not always used, but I almost always use it in, in contested hearings. I, I'm assuming this is contested if y'all are bringing witnesses in. So, um, Ms. Um, Coleman, you'll need to move into another part of wherever you are so you cannot hear what's being said on this um, device. I'm stepping out of the room. So, thank you. Okay. We came back in December, I think it was, on a motion to reunify, which I denied, but we changed the visits. And then we were coming in April, March, and some, mom was either in jail or somewhere. And so we postponed the hearing uh, to have the hearing today. So now we're here to for mom to reassert her claim to reunify. Or what are we, if we're not doing that, what are we doing? Yes, sir. She is still asking for reunification. Okay, and she's still in the um, rescue mission? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Brandon, um, you are, what's your role with Marcus? Um, I'm his therapist. I provide therapy services to him. Okay, and how long have you been seeing him? I have been seeing him probably about three months are now. Are those sessions jointly with either his guardian or his mother or individual? Um, they're set up as individual sessions. I will consult with both his guardian and his mother as needed. Okay. And what types of things have you been going through with, with Marcus? I hear his, his two main goals are executive functioning skills. So things like self-control, emotional functioning, focus, memory, um, and trauma. Okay. Okay, so are, am I stating that correctly? His two main goals are executive functioning, including all of those subtexts, and then uh, trauma treatment. Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, as far as his executive functioning, is he making progress, or are you, obviously, is there still work to be done on that, or what, what's the status on that goal? <laughs> we are still working on it. I hear good reports about his behaviors at home and school progressing, so that's promising. Um. And are there still areas of need or uh, that he needs to work on with that? Yes. Um, and if it's okay, do you mind? My child's just right outside my door. If I move him real quick. Um, so 
I don't know if I answered the question or not, but yes, he still has a lot of progress to make on his executive functioning skills. And that typically is an ongoing thing throughout the child's life. Um, I'd say you wouldn't expect that to be concluded or resolved in the next few months. No. Okay. Um, and you, what are his current uh, diagnoses? I believe we just have him diagnosed as ADHD. Not so. Um, all right, and then his other goal is trauma treatment. What's, uh, can you tell us what's going on with his trauma treatment? Um, so when he came in, I was made most aware of his um, accident with his mother. And he does talk about that pretty extensively, the car accident. And then he has um, PTSD related symptoms like flashbacks came up most recently at his most recent visit. Um, so we're working through a lot of memories that he has that are intrusive. And flashbacks related to the car accident or related to something else? Um, both the car accident and experiences he had while he lived in Florida with his mother. Okay. Do those flashbacks, is that something that is typical of somebody his age or is that an unusual? I mean, it's typical for someone his age with trauma, but it's not typical for just a normally developing child. Okay. Um, and is there anything of particular concern that you, you know, have noted with that tra trauma treatment or his flashback issues? Uh, just the severity of it for his age um, and the way it impacts his ability to build secure attachments. Okay. So um, tell us more about the severity um, issue on that. Um, so it's severely impacted his ability to differentiate time. He doesn't understand right now that those experiences were in the past, that when he has a flashback, that it's a, a memory of a past experience, not something that's actively happening. Um, and obviously that just comes with a lot of symptoms and his behaviors and his functioning, so. Okay, um, can you, so he believes that, so he has, he has a flashback and thinks that it's happening again right now, is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. I know that that's also something that's not going to be quickly resolved, but what would be sort of the ongoing recommendations for treatment of those issues? Um, yeah, trauma treatment is really extensive and it takes an extended period of time, especially with children. One of the biggest factors in whether or not a child is able to successfully complete trauma, like complete trauma treatment would be stability in the home and an attachment to a secure caregiver which I know he currently has in the home he's in presently. So it is hopeful that he can overcome these symptoms. Okay. And so you're talking about his current home with the, the him living with Ms. Valentine. Yes, ma'am. And would you have um, thoughts if he were to be returned to uh, residing in, I guess the, the rescue mission with his mother or other locations outside of Ms. Valentine's home? Um, all I can say is he's, I recommend him staying where he is now because of the stability he has there. I can't speak to what it would be like for him in that location just because I've, I don't work with moms, so I don't have any of the details of what life there is like. Generally speaking, stability is sort of defined as things not being changed very often. Is there any level of change or altering of his routine that you think he might be able to sustain, or is it he should really not have any change at all in his well, routine? We can't avoid all change. So I think just the most stability is kind of the key factors. Does he, the caregivers in his life, are they stable, right? Even with visits, are they happening at a regular basis to where he can expect, you know, and this, this is what's going to happen at a consistent rate so that it is stable. So we can prepare him for changes that we know about, but, um, you know, summer's coming up, that's going to be a change that could disrupt any child's behaviors. Things like that we can prepare for, but big changes are what would um, mainly, mostly impact stability, a change in caregiver, a change in home. Okay. Um, and would, if that type of thing were to happen, would you be expecting more of these flashbacks and other sort of experiencing reality differently issues? Or yes, what would I would, be? Ex I would expect it to worsen. Um, that's not to say it wouldn't worsen and then settle, but I would expect it to worsen initially. Um, and I think you said specifically the, the most recent flashback was not related to the, the car accident, um, but something else. Can you tell us a little bit more what, what was happening there? Uh, the most recent flashback was a memory he had from his experiences in Florida where he was left 
um, he was left at home with his brother for the weekend. Um, and he was just screaming and crying for mom. Um, and he came into my office and he told me that, that at the visit he had had, mom had left him all weekend with his brother and he had been screaming and crying. Um, and it came up, brother wasn't there, brother lives in New York. So after talking with both caregivers, we were able to identify that that was something that had happened in the past that, you know, he is re-experiencing. Um, Cause mom, at the recent visit, mom was there the whole time. Okay. Um, so your, I guess your ongoing recommendation would be maintenance where he is. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, ma'am. I think for right now, that's all I had trying to uh, get us a all right. Ms. Time interest. Uh, yes, um, initially you said that there were actually three things in which you were uh, have identified treatment um, modules, I guess, for one was self-control um, and one was mem functional memory. So I, what I had said was um, executive functioning skills, and then I just gave a couple examples of what falls into executive functioning, and that is things like memory, self-control, emotional regulation. Okay, and when he started in your treatment, what was the reason that, um, that you were given that he needed the, the treatment? Um, trauma treatment was the main referring reason, and the executive functioning stuff. And who, who gave you that? Um, that came from, that was just me speaking with Ms. Valentine. Okay. Um, before you started treatment with him, did you speak with the mom? I spoke with her after I started treatment with him. Okay. Did you receive any records um, like a prior psychological or diagnosis from Ms. Valentine? We no, we don't have any. I think I can pull it up, but I believe the only record we have, like the pediatrician sends a record in the school just that he's attending and such. Okay. Um, do you know whether or not he was, uh, did you receive any information regarding his um, testing for autism or anything like that or neurological report? I did not receive any of those reports. Okay. Um, and when you talk about um, him having flashbacks, so the only flashback he had was his having talking to you about uh, being left alone with a brother while in Florida. He has expressed other um, flashbacks and intrusive memories. I mean, I, I guess my question is, is that was that this an experience in which you observed him having? In this experience, no, it was a recollection of he of the flashback. I did not observe it. Okay, then. So um, he told you about it, or did someone else tell you about? It? He he was able to verbalize the experience to me. Okay. Uh, did Miss Valentine tell you that he had had the experience before you processed it out with him? No. Okay. So then uh, the other thing is is that. Um, He's, um, is he five years of age? Yes. Um, and is it common for five-year-olds not to really have a concept of time? So it's common for it to be limited. It's not common for it to be as severe as his. Okay. It is common with trauma to, for it to impact anybody's ability to comprehend time. Okay. Um, and... You know that he's only lived with Mrs. My understand he's only lived with Miss Valentine since his mom has been in this program. Um, the how how are you conducting the uh, counseling sessions that you're having with him? He comes to see me in the office. Okay. Uh, do you conduct counseling sessions over uh, video conference? We have, yes, ma'am. Um, if he were to. Um, be at the facility with mom, would he still be able to participate in the counseling with you? We, to some degree, yes, ma'am. It might be limited because um, of the fact that it would be telehealth and his, you know, he can't focus for as long of a period no, of time. Yes, he could continue. You, um, are, don't, don't you have an office in Macon? Do you have an office in Macon? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so would they not be able to have the um, sessions at your office in Macon? Oh, yes, they can. If they have transportation, absolutely. All right, then. And then, um, 
so that would be a factor that would con a, a consistent factor, correct? That would um, promote his stabilization, right? Yes. Having the same counselor. Yes. Okay. Um, if he were to move out of state, you know, maybe you know, six months down the line, three months down the line, would you still be able to have uh, counseling services with him via via the conferencing then? No, ma'am. I can only see, I'm on, the licensing is only for Georgia, so we cannot see anyone out of state. The um, services that you're providing is there. Um, those are services that can be provided by other treatment providers. Is that not correct? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. Uh, you indicated previously also that you work with Miss Valentine, that you don't work with the mom. Um, why is that? So. I don't provide any type of therapy for the mom. What I do is uh, we will touch base after sessions and I will give her updates and she can share her concerns about recent visits. And I can like, we can work on parenting strategies, um, things to do during the visits or in between visits to help develop connection and manage any behaviors. Um, but I don't provide like individual therapy services to either Ms. Valentine or Ms. Rodriguez. Okay, and you do provide, do you provide like information to Ms. Valentine to help her manage his care? Okay, and you can do the same for um, Ms. Rodriguez. Then. Yes. Okay. okay, that's all I have, thank you. Anything on redirect? I have a question, Judge. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Ms. Brannon, were you aware that the child was having weekend visitations with his mother um, at the mother's facility? Yes. And he had um, weekend visitations in January and February. Are you, were you aware of that? Yes. And then was did it come to your attention that the mother was incarcerated during the month of March of 2023? Yes. How, how did that impact of him not being able to visit the mom? How did that, that if anything, affected his stability or his sense of um, safe or um, you're indicating that he needs that sense of stability. How did that, him not being able to visit his mom, how did that impact him? Um, in sessions, he functioned the same. Um, I believe, if I recall correctly, this because we work on school behaviors, the school reported stabilized behaviors during that time where previously he had been having like outbursts just a, day, a couple of days after the visit. So those had stabilized some. Um, but other than that, I did not notice any clinical changes in him. Did the teachers report that he was having some defiant behaviors um, subsequent to his visitations with his mom? They were after his visits with mom, I believe. Okay. okay. That's the only question I had, Judge. Anything further from counsel for any of the parties? Just briefly, Ms. Brandon. So just to clarify, this most recent flashback, um, was that was presented to you as what happened the most recent visitation weekend? Is that what that flashback was that, that Marcus had verbalized? Marcus had verbalized that it happened that weekend, um, that mom had left him with his brother all weekend. Um, but, you know, that was not possible um, as a brother lives in New York. And so it was clear that that was not the accurate recollection of the visit. Okay. So you saw him after his most recent visitation, it, like this most recent visit in, I think it was April? Yes. Correct. And so his, his report to you was that he went to his mom's for visitation and his mom left him alone with his brother yes okay so that's the type of flashback we're talking about not that he remembers something happening years ago and isn't clear on timelines um yes now he does have those as well he has a lot of memories of things that happened in the past that he also verbalizes okay okay um that was my only other question your honor can oh. Ms. brandon be excused just um judge um in reference to it but is it not unusual when a child's wanting to be with his mother, uh, particularly he's five years old, um, that he would have some acting out behavior? Is that unusual? In just so I make sure I understand, referencing his behaviors after visits. Yes. Um, it's not uncommon. Thank you. And this witness be excused? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so Marcus had a most recent, his most recent visitation was in April after Ms. Um, Ms. Rodriguez returned from her, her incarceration, correct? Correct. 
was that when was that it was her incarceration or the, the uh, visit. sorry visit the visit was april 7th until april 9th okay and was that on the normal schedule that you'd had or was there something different with the easter as weekend as far as the days yes the time um i had brought him earlier that friday because he was on spring break so i said why not you know i spoke to her about it figured out an earlier time um if that would be possible for her she said yes and i dropped him off at 11 30 um that friday morning as opposed to friday normal friday night okay have um and was that something that you initiated or she initiated i initiated it i found out that the um, normal daycare that he goes to when school is closed would be closed as well. So I said, why not take advantage of the opportunity and bring him over there earlier? Okay. Opportunity for what? For just for him to spend time with her. Okay. You know, if he was going to be home anyway. Okay. And he was going and, to later that night. So. Okay. Um, have there been other issues with the visitation um, drop off and pick up times? Yes. So the time um, is written, I believe, six o'clock Friday nights. I don't get home from work until six o'clock um, every night. And without traffic, they're about an hour away. So there's really no way for me to get him there on time. Normally, when I drop him off Friday nights, it's pretty much a play by ear type of time. And I let her know you know, once I find, put it in the GPS and find out what approximate time I'll be there, then um, we take it like that. Um, there was another issue. Now, normally we do five o'clock pickup on Sundays because that way I can get him home at a decent hour, get him ready for school and in bed, all the kids really, but ready for school the next day. The, we had an issue with a pickup for February's visit. She refused for him to get picked up any time before six o'clock. Um, I explained to her that, you know, he's got to get ready for school. She said, oh, you're only 45 minutes away. That's plenty of time to get him ready for school. Well, that ended up being an accident on the highway. We didn't get home until 7.30 and he was falling asleep in school the next day. Um, I later then found out after she had went to court and she pled guilty and all of that stuff that it clicked in my head that that's probably why she fought that hard for that time, but she didn't explain that. She just pretty much said, oh, well, he's not gonna be ready until six. Um, so if, going forward, would you prefer a change in some visitation times for, um, is it fair to say that, that the six trying to get him there on Friday evenings is disruptive to you and your other kids as well as Marcus? Yeah, because I don't even get home until six o'clock. So, Sometimes it wouldn't be until maybe eight o'clock. I still have to go home and feed at least the other kids and things like that. And, you know, if she wants to feed him at the facility. That's fine. But I still have other children that I need to feed and I can't feed them at eight o'clock at night. Um, pick up time at five o'clock. That was the only time that she objected to it. Any other time, including this last visit, was fine. So five o'clock pick up on Sundays is fine because I can get him home and fed if he doesn't eat because typically she sends him with food or whatever, but he doesn't eat it. Um, so, you know, that's the only thing is, and, and if I'm getting him there at 8.30 at night, that doesn't, you know, as opposed to Saturday, early Saturday morning, you know, I don't really see a big difference if he can, if he's just going there to go to sleep. Well, why don't By we just let him there. go live with mom? What's, what's wrong with that? Then you don't have to worry about having to feed your other kids. I mean, I have to feed all of them. It's not. No, I want to know why we can't send the child home with mom. Do you have objection to that? Yes, because there's the stability. There's no stability. She doesn't. She, she it's always been like this. This accident was not the isolated incident. It's not at all. The only reason why that this is the only incident that's being talked about is because she just moved to Georgia. If you go to Florida, there's been cases that they were trying to form on at school against her because he was coming in with black eyes and things like that. I would object, Your Honor, and now the citizen. I'm saying the objection. We're talking about April 24, 2023, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as we sit here today, what is your objection to the child returning home to mom so you can feed your other kids on time? That's not why 
that has nothing to do with anything. You spent 10 minutes talking about it, so it must have been a big crawl in your stomach. So I want to know what your objections are to the child being returned to mom today. Because there's no stability. Besides the screw up about an hour difference. You cheated her out of two hours on Friday, and you didn't mind that, but then you complained that she made you inconvenienced and it's on Sunday. So we're not going to talk about that anymore. I want you to tell me besides that, what is the problem with mom having her kid? There's no stability with her and she okay. cannot handle his behaviors. She okay. feeds into his behaviors, which causes more behaviors. This is the only visit to where she had told me that he has behaved the visit. Other times he's been up screaming until one o'clock in the morning that she has told me herself. She does not know how to handle his behaviors, which is part of the reason why she came to live with me in the first place. Okay. So I can teach her how to handle his behaviors and what to do with them because I work with this pop this population. Okay. Any other questions for your client, Ms. Pauls? Do you um, have reason to believe that Ms. Rodriguez has uh, improved her stability or her ability to support Marcus uh, independently yet? No, there's nothing that shows that. Um, she She does, she hasn't, I haven't even spoken to her. She does not speak to me. I update her on appointments and that's it. She hasn't let me, not that she has to, but I don't know of her doing anything. Um, is your concern because you want to keep Marcus away from his mother or something different? The goal was never to keep Marcus away from his mother. The goal was to keep Marcus safe while she gets everything together because she had a lot of things going on at that time. It's not just an accident. This, this is a long running thing. So like I said before, this is not a one time accident incident. The whole goal that everybody wants is safety and stability for Marcus while she gets every, her life together pretty much. This, we don't want the same pattern to happen with Marcus that happened with her older son. Just a couple, you said that she, uh, um, something about ind being independent and improving her circumstance. Um, you understood when she left uh, Marcus with you that she was going into the program, correct? Not at all. I picked Marcus up from the hospital. Okay. And she didn't and return? I found out through other family members that she had checked herself into the psych ward. She didn't tell me nothing. She left him in the car and walked off. And um, so she... So in the, the circumstances of him being, uh, her being in the program, um, as far as you know, she's uh, been doing everything that was asked of her. As far as I know, yeah. And she is actually supporting the child because there's an order of child support that you took out, correct? That just started, yes. All right. And so she's paying her the amount of support that was ordered by the court? Yes, yeah, she just started paying this month. Okay. And she also uh, was able to start the process for Marcus to receive uh, social security benefits, correct? She started that when she lived in my house. Okay. And that was based on his behavior and trying to come up with a... a... No, that was be based off of her not doing it in Florida and her coming here, having no income and using Florida records to file for social security because she never did it for her older son. Okay, and so in that process, um, she was able to um, get the get some benefits started for him, correct? She did the application, that was it. Okay. I did everything else. As, um, and as a result, you received support that way for him, correct? Yes. We've already gone over that. That's all I have. Ms. Miller? I don't have any questions, Judge. All right, do you have any other witness, Ms. Bolts? I do not, Your Honor. Ms. Valentine, did you say you receive a monthly social security check for the child or does mom receive that? No, I'm the payee for the for it because he lives with me. And so I receive it. It goes into his bank account. How much is it? $609 a month. $609? Correct. And how much do you get child support from the mother? $264. For what pay period? A monthly, weekly, bi-weekly? Monthly. $264. Were you involved with the court proceeding that set the 264 a month? No. You didn't have to submit any financial information about your needs? I filed the petition, that was it, the court date, 
I actually had forgotten about the court date. I didn't go. I thought it would be automatically dropped. And then a week after the court date, I received paperwork of the court order. Did you tell from the court order if they gave her credit for the social security payments that are being made? I don't know any of that. She was there. She signed the paperwork. Judge, I have a copy of um, a copy of it, but I don't. I know that they assess fifty percent each person, but the support, the um, social security benefit, was not included. Okay. I had put that on the initial paperwork when I had filed the petition. I don't know how they came up to that at the hearing. They just imputed income to the okay, parents. Battle your turn. Did you want me to hear from this, um, Ms. Coleman? First, before your uh, yes, yes. If I can just have her to just testify as to how mom's doing. Could you go get Miss Coleman, please? Can you just tell us, um, since mom has been back in the program, um, how has um, how has her compliance been? Um, Melissa's been doing great. She's, uh, I can see that she's really taken hold of the program. She's learning some really hard lessons. Um, her countenance has changed. She's not nearly as wound up and um tense as she was in the beginning she has come back in with um humility and taken responsibility for her actions and ownership which is huge because in the very beginning um there was a lot of denial and um things of that nature but she's really taken ownership of her part and and the outcome and the circumstance that she's found herself in um, at this season of her life have you been um present uh when she's had visitation with marcus uh briefly i have seen uh, i think it was easter weekend when he came a little early on friday and i was able to see him and her interacting together is if um the court were to uh allow marcus to return to her home with the program supported at this time absolutely Are there any um, services that you offer to uh, to the families? Um, for instance, the child uh, needs counseling. Um, is there anything that the program can provide to assist? Um, I mean, absolutely. If he, you know, he would obviously need transportation to and from the appointments, and we would be able to provide that support and resource for him to continue the treatment that he needs. Is, is she still on track? Well, I know that uh, because of her incarceration and her. Um, She's delayed in being able to graduate in uh, June. I think it, uh, March was original. I think the court, the date she was going to graduate. When do you expect that she'll graduate from the program? As long as she continues to cooperate and participate and engage, um, then she's projected to graduate July 1st. And if um, the court returns the child to her, yeah, I don't, I'm sorry, I might have asked this while the dog was barking, um, is um, he able to go into the program, uh, into the facility immediately, or will that take some time? Yes, ma'am. We can make accommodations for that. Thank you. Ma'am. Ms. Coleman, when did um, Ms. Rodriguez enter your facility? Um, Melissa's intake date was June, June 29th of 22. Okay. And she lived there until she had to go serve time in jail? Yes, sir. What was that date? She went to jail, what was your court date? Uh, February 28th. She went to jail on February 28th and then she came back, I believe it was March 28th, March, March 27th. 30th. March 30th. Yep. Okay, so she was gone almost right out of month and she'd been yep. back then. I, my notes indicate that she told me she was graduating in April. So now you're telling me, and then that was before she had to go do the jail time. Um, so now you're saying July 1st? Yes, sir. All right. What is is the primary um, support system in your program a spiritual program? Yes, sir. We're faith based. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have on site um, professional therapists, either for substance abuse or the family counseling or anything, or do you send folks out to providers in the community? Yes, sir. We don't have anybody on staff here as um, counselors or therapists, but we do have um, partners in the community that we send our residents to. Melissa's actually um, currently seeing somebody. She's got a therapist and I got to meet her um, one afternoon last week. So she's mm -hmm. already going and receiving counseling services. Do you know if she works? Melissa? Does she a, yes. Does she have a job? No, sir. Our residents aren't allowed to um, seek employment while they're in the program. Okay. Well, what is she getting help for in your program? 
uh, for a toxic lifestyle, destructive choices. Um, you know, when she first came in, it wasn't to drugs and alcohol, but as I said, in her time being here, she's taken ownership of her lifestyle choices and, you know, admitted that she did have a problem and she's here seeking help and a better life for her and for Marcus. Do you drug screen your residents? Yes, sir. How often? We do it randomly. And then anytime they leave campus to go to an appointment and come back, they get a drug screen at that time as well. Has she ever failed a drug screen for y'all? No, sir. Did you say no? No, sir. Okay. Correct. Um, the last time I saw her, I told her to, she had 20 days to get a hair follicle drug screen. Do you know if she got that or not? You may yes, not. Sir. You don't know? She did. Yes, sir. She did get it. Yes. It was a whole, uh, it was difficult because um, you guys requested specifically to be tested for Flocka and there aren't many labs that do that testing. So it was a feat trying to find a location and to get it, uh, the cost covered and everything, but she got it done. What professional uh, drug and alcohol counseling has she had? Uh, you say y'all use outside providers and she's got a therapist, but I, I assume that's a personal therapist. that's not specifically addressing drugs and alcohol. I may be assuming wrong, but what she, treatment has she received specifically for drugs and alcohol? So her counselor, her therapist is addressing the drug and alcohol, okay. like a whole. She doesn't have a whole and drug and alcohol. Right, uh, she doesn't. No, if you don't, if the witness doesn't know, you don't get to prompt the witness, okay? okay. Ms. Rodriguez, I, I'll ask you some of the same questions when I get to you, but let her answer it. And it's okay if she doesn't know the answer. Do, are you aware what are the plans for her and this child, if the child came home with her and she's get, due to get out July 1, did she come to you because she was homeless back in June of last year? Uh, Melissa came to us June of last year because um, her life was uh, out of control and she knew that she needed help. Oh, okay. And I was provided a safe place for her to come. It wasn't ever, she didn't state that it was because she was homeless. It was really because she was in a bad way and she needed, needed some help. Did she live in the Macon area at the time she sought admission in your program? No, sir. Where did she live? She, it's my understanding that she was in Henry County. Okay. Do y'all help people find housing when they graduate from your program? Yes, sir. And we have a transitional program that um, many of our residents right now, we have seven ladies that have graduated and are currently transitioning here on campus. And everybody that graduates, that completes the program um, has the option to stay in transition. Um, the ideal amount of time is three months, but we understand that Sometimes they're not able to, you know, save up the money and find an employment and housing in that much time. So they really have as much time as they need. We're not going to. If, if they're not allowed to work and unless they've got a trust fund somewhere, they wouldn't get the money to pay the deposits in three months. So they right. have to be with you longer than three months. Correct. And we unless they have outside assistance, you know, family members or something. But sure. we say, you know, we want to put a three month timeline out there so that they understand we're not making a lifestyle out of this. You know, we're willing to work with you as long as it takes and we're not going to kick anybody out on the streets that's not ready unless of course they're there's they're yeah. using doing things that they that go against their agreement, their lease agreement, but um you know, we want to see them successful. We're walking with them for 9 to 12 months as they walk into this new life, this brand new life change and the freedom of, and recovery and so we we don't want to set them up for failure, obviously. Have you ever observed the mother with this child while the child is at that facility on weekend visit? I briefly got to um, see her and Marcus when he came for um, Easter weekend. Uh, Miss Valentine brought him earlier around lunchtime that day. So I was able to see um, Melissa and Marcus hang out and engage with each other. And it was very, it was very sweet. It was very heartwarming to watch them together. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I stuck my nose in. So what, who, anybody else have any questions for Ms. Coleman? Ms. Coleman, you stated that um, she is seeing a professional counselor now? Ma'am. She is seeing a professional counselor now, you stated? Yes, ma'am. And how long have you, has your facility been providing rides for that to, to take place? Um, since she started seeing her, which I want to say was probably September, October. Of last year? Yes. And since you she's were- Counseling. This offsite counseling? No, ma'am. It was offsite. Right. Going... Okay. So you're, it's your testimony that she's been seeing this counselor offsite who's a licensed therapist since September, October of last year? It's a, my, I don't have that in front of me, but that would be my best guess. Okay. And are, are you the provider who came to court with her in December? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just making sure. Um, and you recall the court at that point instructing Ms. Rodriguez to get a, to obtain a professional licensed non-faith-based counselor, correct? I don't recall that. Okay. No. 
Um, and um, the December 19th order instructed her to get that 12 point drug screen done within 20 days. Um, the date on the screening was actually February 9th, correct? Okay. Um, and I believe you stated there was some, you had to work on getting some money together. So it, did the facility pay for that, that drug screen? Um, what took so long was finding a place that would provide the drug screen that met the parameters that were set forward. Like I mentioned to the judge a few minutes ago, it was the Flocka. Right. So yep. well, who paid for it? Charges. Who, who paid for it? Lisa covered those charges. Okay, that you broke up for a second there. And have you provided any of her records to the guardian ad litem, her treatment records, her housing progress notes, anything like that? Not to my knowledge, no ma'am. I haven't been, they haven't been requested. No other questions? And oh, I'm sorry, just one. So Ms. Ms. Rodriguez is not employed. Correct. And she would not be eligible to be employed until after she graduates July 1st or, or thereabouts? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No other questions. Go ahead, Ms. Evans Battle. Hey, Ms. Rodriguez. Hi. Hi. Um, can you tell me um, about the um, treatment um, that we just mentioned? You're currently in treatment, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I've been doing a 12-step program here at the Rescue Mission since I, I entered in, in uh, June. Um, and then I did have a therapist in January through telehealth, um, but she she wound up backing out or, or wasn't able to see me. So then I started seeing a counselor. When I went to go see Marcus at um, the Piedmont Counseling, I inquired with them. I took an assessment um, and they paired me with a uh, mental health and drug and alcohol counselor, uh, Ms. Lisa Green. Okay. And did Ms. Green provide you with uh, a letter for the court back in March? Um, yes, she did. All right, then. And we were anticipating coming in anticipation of coming to court on March the 6th. Um, Judge, I have um, that. I can forward it to everyone so they'll have a copy of it. Now that you. Um, so now that you're back at the facility, the um, you have you have to take a. Um, uh, are you guys running on phases of treatment? Is that how the how the program operates? Like phase one, two, three. Correct. Or, yes. Mm -hmm. So as a result of that, you had to take a phase back because of your leaving, having to be gone from the program for thirty days. Correct. Correct. And so that's the only reason that, um, that you are uh, out of sync with your graduation date, correct? Um, that and um, I, ha I did have, you know, some issues with the peer support because I've been so focused solely on, you know, just getting Marcus back and not really digging into myself. Um, so we were looking at, you know, going back a month or so with, with my treatment as well. Um, because I needed to, to, to really focus on the reasons that I'm here, um, realize that it wasn't just drugs. It's a lifestyle change. Um, you know, having problem with men and self-esteem, um, you know, and how it affects my children and not just myself. Okay. Did you, uh, report any issues in reference to Marcus visits, um, to Ms. Valentine? Um, no, a couple of times, the first time he came here, I said that his behavior at night, like, um, he didn't want to go to bed now, whether it was exciting that he was here or not. Um, that's the only problem that I had. The other problem was, you know, the matter of him, the times that he would get here. Okay. And you understood that the court order was from 6 PM on Friday to 6 PM on Sunday. Um, but you were willing to work with Miss Valentine at that time regarding the times, correct? Correct. And on that Friday incident that she was discussing, you know, the reason that I held him to his times was not only because I was knew I was going to jail, but it was more or less because it was not discussed. Um, the two times prior to him coming here, we discussed times. And, you know, I understand she's coming with the kids and to get him here at 830 at night, you know, it's taking away from my time. And then I have to give time up on the, on the back end as well. So the, the two times prior him coming, they were discussed and they were set times that she was coming on that particular weekend. There was nothing ever discussed. 
Okay. And and you're asking the court to, um, based on your circumstance, to allow Marcus to turn to you at this time? That is correct. Um, you know, this is some new information that's coming up as far as you know, the stability and me being homeless. I don't know what Christina is coming at because even when I was at her home, I still drove for Lyft um, and I, I still drove for Lyft and Uber. So I was still making an income. Yes, I wasn't paying bills or rents. Um, when I left my apartment in Florida, my rent was actually, I moved to Miss Christina's home in May. Um, my rent was actually paid through June, even though it was, you know, being paid with the program through COVID. Um, so the matter of stability and keeping a roof over my child's head was never an issue. Um, so that's something that's, that, that's new to me. Um, the stuff that's coming up with my older son, yes, he has issues, but you know, I, I, I don't know where this is all coming from at this you point. Know, focus on Mark, on Marcus. Are you be able to, um, ensure that he, um, you know, gets to the counseling that he needs to get to? Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's here in Macon, which makes it actually even more convenient. Um, you know, I just want to be able to 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 start. I, I tried to go to the counseling sessions and I was advised not to come. So, um, you know, she does call me uh, after the appointment and does touch base on, on what's going on. But that's 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 definitely not an issue is getting him to the counseling sessions. I think I was, which was um, let me ask you about um, what is the child's um, what is your understanding of the child's diagnosis? Um, he has impulse control disorder and ADHD. Okay. And that was based on the neurologicals that you um, had asked to get completed? Correct. I had uh, two, I, he seen two neurologists in Florida prior to me moving to Georgia, which is what prompted me um, to file for the, the disability. Okay. And what was the first, uh, the second was ADHD. What was the first one again? What was that? I'm sorry, Your Honor. I didn't What's hear the you. The first diagnosis you said something in ADHD. Uh, in, impulsive, impulse control disorder. Oh, okay. I heard disorder, but I didn't catch the impulse control. Oh, disorder. sorry about that. No, that's okay. And if you're given the information um, as to you know who his counselors are and where he can get counseling, would you be able to uh, ensure that he's getting that those counseling sessions? Yes. And um, he is currently enrolled in a pre-K program. Is that not correct? Uh, that is correct. Okay. And uh, when would he be starting the uh, formal kindergarten program? Uh, that will be coming up. Um, I believe school starts in Georgia in August. That I haven't looked into yet because I, I wasn't sure about the whole situation with with the state. With saying here, um, if he is enrolled in, if he's to be enrolled in kindergarten, and you were uh, finishing up the program uh, or in the transitional portion of the program, do are you aware what school he would attend? Uh, yes, he would attend Sunny Carter Elementary, um, which I did look into. They actually have a bus that comes right here to the rescue mission, um, and it is currently rated um, at a B, B grade school. As far as visitation go, um, other than when you were incarcerated, has you have you missed any visit visits with the child? I'm sorry, say that again. Have uh, I missed any? No. Okay. And you, do you still have a uh, telephone or video conference visit with him? I do. Um, he has not really been complying on it. Um, he only talks to me for about five minutes and then he wants to go. His attention seems to be more with playing. Um, he just does not. And, and that's always been an issue um, with Marcus. He, he never liked the phone. Okay. And he's five, correct? Correct. <laughs> um, I know that there was um, some concern or some question about your uh, leaving him alone or his believing that he was left alone. Um, can you tell me what that might be from? Um, yeah, I, um, I'm not going to lie. As we know, I did have a, 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 an alcohol problem um, with some drug use when I was in Florida. Um, however, you know, the, one of the things that she indicated was that he has no, no recollection of time. Um, my son was never left overnight with my, with my son. Um, I would put him to bed at nine o'clock at night, and then I would go downstairs or around the corner. And when he would wake up crying, screaming for me, my son would call me and I would come home. So that kind of, it throws me off because he's never been left for a weekend or even overnight with my son. Um, and then now, uh, and, and now in the, in this, in the, at the mission, at least, um, not only will you be there, is there, uh, is there any, while well, you're participating in activities, um, is there like a pre-K program or daycare or child care service? Um, well, it would be just as if I was attending regular employment. So as I was going to my classes and treatment throughout the day, he would still attend his pre-K or school services. Um, he would still attend aftercare just like he would if I had a, a job of employment. On Saturdays here at the center, they do offer daycare. 
we do have a daycare here, um, but I would necessarily get Marcus a, a daycare off center um, that, that specializes more with his needs and, and, and care um, because they do have people here, but I don't think it's more of a learning environment, which I, I feel that he needs more. Okay. And, um, but it, that being said, do you think that you're able uh, today, if the court were to um, location that you would be able to put the services in place? I'm sorry, say that last part again. I said if um, you were saying about a child care with particularly with special needs, do you think that you would be able to put those services in place if the court were to give Marcus back to you today? Yes, definitely. Until I had the services signed up, there is a daycare here. I mean, he's not special needs where he's autistic and, and, and has special things. It's more of a behavioral. Um, so here they would be able to watch him for a couple of days until we got him enrolled into an active daycare um, or into kindergarten, whatever he needs to do. So there is a, a backup daycare at the center. Okay. And um, lastly, um, you had, when we came before the court originally, mm -hmm. um, you had some legal actions that were um, pending, correct? That is correct. And how did you resolve um, that legal act, the legal portion of it, criminal portion? Um, I went to court, I pled guilty, and I served uh, my time in jail. Okay, and uh, you pled guilty to what charges? Um, that would be a DUI and DUI with uh, child endangerment. Okay, and did... Um, as, are you on a supervision order following? Or, and how long? Yes, is that? I have probation. Uh, that's going to be for two years. Okay. And as part of that probation or orders from the court, is there anything that says that you cannot have um, unsupervised or uh, cannot have contact with the child? No, ma'am. Um, as part of that uh, order, are you uh, also required to take drug screens? Yes, it's random. Um, could be every month, could be every week. Um, it's all at the the uh, at the discretion of the probation officer. Um, she did mention because I'm in a program, um, some of the fees or stuff that they may charge me for right now would be would be on hold. I'd be able to work those off in community service hours, which is what I'm doing as well. Okay. And um, would you make those uh, screens available if you could to the court if needed? Absolutely, yes, ma'am. And those screens would be in addition to the ones that you take at the center, correct? Correct. Well, they said while I was in the program, I could use the same ones. But if that's if, if that's what the court uh, requires, I could do that as well. I think what she was asking, is there documentation of drug screens through probation and drug screens through the uh, um, rescue mission? Uh, so far, I've taken one with probation when I first got out of jail and I've taken one every single month at the rescue mission. So I just got out of jail last month. She hasn't called me for a drug screen. Like she said, she said it could be every other month. It might be every, you know, every week. It's all just random. Okay. I think that's all I have for the purpose of this review. Thank you. Thank you. You stated that you've started with some treatment at the same provider that Marcus is attending, correct? That is correct. What issues are you addressing in your in your treatment there? Um, mental health and substance abuse. Okay. You're talking about parenting issues or parenting uh, classes or parenting skills? Um, no, I have not. Um, have you ever taken any parenting classes? Um, we did uh, here at the rescue mission. And what was that like? Um, it went over different behaviors, impulsive behaviors, control, um, learning how to speak to your child. Um, I don't know what the name of the curriculum is, though. I'll be honest. I don't know what it was called. How long, how long was the class? Um, it was the three months. Okay. Was that like weekly or every day? Eight every, hours? Uh, once a week. Once a week. Okay. And um, given that you pled guilty to DUI and DUI endangering a child, are you on driving restrictions? Um, I have a suspended license for six months, or if I complete the driver um, assessment, then I can get a hardship license. Uh, and a hardship license is if you are working offsite, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and I know that you've uh, sort of spoken about the drug screens at the, the rescue mission, and you've called them random, but I believe last hearing, it was, was clearly established that they're not random in the sense that you don't know when they're coming. They're like every fourth Friday, correct? Um, no, ma'am. They're random. So I don't know how it came up that it was every fourth Friday, but we don't know when they're going to be done. They call us in. They tell us everybody go over to the side for a book first training. So if it just happened to be that fourth Friday every month, I don't recall because, you know, we're busy here with, with, with programs and stuff. So I never even noticed that it was every fourth Friday. It's just random. They'll tell us in the meeting, hey, guys, I need everybody to report next door. And that's where we go. Okay. So you don't recall your, your uh, provider testifying to that last time we were in court in December? She never um, testified. Well, as far as I know, I don't remember her testifying that they were done at a specific time. She said they were random. Okay. And, um, cause they were, 
June 21st, July 29th, August 26th, September 30th, October 28th, November 23rd, December 9th. So these, except the December 9th was right before court, but the rest of those, I believe, were all the last Friday of the month, the fourth Friday of the month. I don't have a calendar in front of me, unfortunately. So, okay. Um, so but you, as far as I know, they're random. We never know when they're going to happen. So, uh, okay. So you presented to your probation officer that they're completely random. You have no idea when they're going to happen. Is that what you've told um, your probation officer? My probation officer has nothing to do with the drug screens that are here. My probation officer, when she says that I need to have one done, then one gets done. So I had one when I first got out of jail. She has not requested one since. My question was you, your probation officer, uh, you, you told your probation officer that the, the drug screens that are done at the mission are random. Is that correct? Um, my probation officer never asked me. No, ma'am. Okay. She told me that when I go, she just told me the fee there. And I asked her if I take them at the, at the um, rescue mission, would that be suitable? And she said, yes. Okay. And you recall signing that consent reunification plan back in August, right? Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, number one of the re reunification plan is that you should, you were going to successfully complete rehabilitation, rehabilitation at the bank and rescue mission. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. And so that hasn't happened yet, has it? Um, not because of what just happened, correct? Because of me going to jail, ma'am. That's the only reason that I have not completed. And, uh, and then there's complete counseling and follow the rules at the, and the drug screens at the rescue mission um, as two, three, and four. Um, That's all been done. And... You, number seven and eight um, are, number seven is to secure and maintain stable housing suitable for a child for a minimum period of six months. Are you maintaining that you've done so? Um, I've been at the rescue mission for 10 months. So that's maintaining a home. Okay. I'm um, not saying I'm not working. I'm not employed. So that, that I can't, I can't say, no, I've been in a program. I have to complete the program. And your uh, attorney had alluded to, and I believe you would make comments to Ms. Valentine that you are planning to return to Florida perhaps after you leave the rescue mission? Absolutely not. Um, I'm planning to return to another state, but not Florida. I will never go back to Florida. Okay. But you're not planning on staying in Georgia? Um, I'm not sure at this point. Um, I, I'm going to work and do whatever's best for my child. Okay. Um, and you're not currently employed, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, Marcus was born in January of 2018. Um, is how many places has he lived? How many different residences has he had in his life? Three. Well, Three? Christina would be four. Christina would be four. Yes, ma'am. I moved. Um, I was living in New York. I moved to Florida. I lived with a friend for three months until I got my apartment. I lived in my same apartment for three years. Okay. And how many? And then, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, how many different people lived in that apartment with you? Um, two. And how many times were the police called out to those to your residences while you had custody, of Marcus? Judge, I am, we are seems to be seem to be well beyond the reason that we're here. We're here for a review as to current issues regarding whether or not the child remains dependent and can be returned to the mother. This is way beyond the scope of what we're here for today, and I would object to that questioning. Any response? To uh, the Your Honor, a, a big part of this uh, discussion is about stability and um, whether she has been able to maintain and will be able to continue to maintain um, sobriety going forward. And so I think that her history of stability is relevant to the discussion. Well, the, what does the number of times police are called to her residence have to do with stability? It may have been a neighbor who didn't like her and called her because she had a stereo too loud. Um, well, I mean, my I, main is, I don't want to be here until tomorrow listening no. about 50 um, 911 calls that went to this house for one reason or another um, that, that didn't happen recently. I mean, it, the fact that it happened in the last three to five years is not something that I think I need to hear about unless you can be more specific about how it points to her current stability or lack thereof. Well, I, Your Honor, as of right now, she's in a controlled environment. And when she was not in a controlled environment, there were calls being made because she was threatening suicide and the child was there in a filthy apartment. And I think he was not dressed even. And I know there was a history of domestic violence. Well, in her previous I, I don't know if she has some report that even says that because it sounds like my attorney, the attorney here is testifying based on some information, hearsay information that she received somewhere else. Um, but besides that, Judge, I still could um, argue that and object to the line of questioning because none of this was brought up. This initial hearing came because she was in a facility. Uh, she could not take care of the child. She had the DUI. And, um, and based on all of that, and she had a substance abuse issue and mental health issues. And those are the things that we addressed from the beginning of this case and should be continuing to address them. And that should be it. Um. 
I haven't heard about it. I mean, you can't have domestic violence unless you've got a domestic roommate or, or uh, live in or spouse or something. And I haven't heard that that's even exists now. So I don't know how domestic violence per se has anything to do with what we're doing today. I'm going to sustain the objection. We need to. Any other questions? Your um, drug and alcohol treatment is right now, I believe you testified, is consists of 12 step. Is that correct? It is a 12 step with outside counseling. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then um, have you ever had any evaluations for need the need for um, psychological or psychiatric medications for yourself? Uh, yes, ma'am. When I went and did the initial intake um, at Piedmont, they had me do uh, mental health evaluation and substance abuse evaluations. And had you provided those evaluations to the guardian as litem? Um, they were never asked for. No other questions. Well, did they recommend that you get any kind of treatment or go on any type of medication? No, sir. The reason that I did is the, the, at the last hearing, you, you, you highly suggested that, that I go and seek out mental um, for drug and alcohol counseling. And I took heed of your advice. So if you do, if you do an assessment, it generally yields a recommendation as to some type of treatment, counseling, oh. education. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood. Um, yes, I'm. They recommended that I see the therapist. I meet with her once a week, um, and it is for substance abuse and uh, slight depression. Did anybody suggest that you consult with a medical provider that could prescribe a medication for depression or for any? Other um, I am currently support? taking. I'm currently taking Zoloft. Okay. Was that was that prescribed for depression? Um, no, it was actually for PMDD, but it also treats depression. Tell me what PMDD is. It is post menstrual um, dysphoric disorder. Okay. So, what goes along with that? Is there, um, it's 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 certain? around. It's around your, your your menstrual time. Um, you tend to get very depressed, uh, feel a little out of control. Um, so by counteracting it with a uh, antidepressant, it I guess calms you. It doesn't allow you to to feel out of control around those times, like with your hormones fluctuating. Okay, so that's the only med that was prescribed. Yes, sir. And you're currently taking that. Correct. Does the um, does the program at Rescue Mission discourage the use of psychotropic meds? No, they actually partner with uh, River's Edge, so they do send some people out. There are certain medications that we cannot take um, because they, you know, it'll come up in a drug test. I don't have that list of medications because it's not anything that I ever needed. Was the DUI and endangering the child the wreck that you described previously, or is this another incident? No, that's the same incident, Your Honor. Okay, and where did that occur? Uh, that was in Perry, Georgia. Uh, Houston County? Houston County, correct. Okay, and when, you don't have to give me the exact date, but- month uh, It was June 25th. Uh, what year? Uh, two, uh, 22. And you're on 24 months probation with 30 days to serve, which you've already served? Correct. It was 60 days to serve, but then they gave me two, two for one and I got out in 30, okay. correct. And you have to go to the um, DUI classes, yes. correct? I'm sorry, what was that? You have to go to the DUI classes? No, it's not a DUI class. I have to take two, well, I guess, yes, it is a DUI class. It's like a risk assessment where I have to watch the causes of people with DUIs and um, road test and the reasonings behind the DUIs. Do you have to put one of those uh, gizmos on your steering wheel? So interlocks device, do you have to do that? No, I just have a suspension on my license for six months. And you don't have and a vehicle right now, right? What's that, I'm sorry? You don't I don't have, have a vehicle, vehicle right now. No, no I do not. Right, Ms. Rock, you have any questions? It's Ms. Miller. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, my, my, question was, my question was the same as the court's, was that um, the incarceration, incarceration that she served in March, was that for the DUI and the child endangerment? And I think she affirmatively answered that that was the incarceration in March of 2023. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that was my only question, Judge. How did you end up in Henry County? You've been all over the map. I don't know. What, what is um, your connection to Henry County? I left Florida to go to Henry County was where Christina lived. So I was residing with Christina um, when I left her home. And that's when I got into the accident when so, I was drinking. So you knew her before you came up here? She's my cousin. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. I don't remember. You may have told me that last time. I don't remember. Oh, sorry. I don't remember anybody telling me y'all were related by blood. I just, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm sure you did, but I just, okay. my, head, my brain does not retain everything it gets, unfortunately. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, just the um, yesterday, I submitted the letter from her counselor. I sent, I forwarded it to everyone from the email in which the counselor um, sent to me. Um, Christine, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, Ms. Rodriguez was not included in the email from the counselor. Uh, she just sent it directly to me and I forwarded it to uh, you all yesterday uh, because the court had asked about her counseling services and that letter um, is from her counselor telling her what services she's receiving. You have not tendered anything else documentary wise, have you? No, sir. I think that uh, the drug screens came in from, well, there were some drug screens that came in from the facility uh, that the court received at a prior hearing, at the last hearing. And I know Ms. Um, Pulse just went uh, through those. So I know the court has those. Um, and I think that that, so I, if you want to document them as number um, two. What, excuse me, may I say something? No. Is that the, no, okay. Any objection to, I'm marking that letter for, as M1. Any objection? No, sir. Any other evidence anybody want to present? I just would like to give a recommendation, Judge. Sure. Judge, we have quite a delicate situation here. We've got my client, Marcus, who has an impulse control disorder um, and, and needs stability and structure, which we heard from the therapist yesterday. And we and then we have the mother who is seeking reunification in this case, who has um, or is getting counseling and working on her mental health um, situation and her substance abuse and maintaining sobriety. Um, so I had thought about some recommendations yesterday when, during the hearing, and um, I think what I'm going to ask the court to do, and I'm going to recommend to the court, is that we keep the child with Miss Valentine. He needs to stay in his same school at least until the end of May. Um, I would like to try some transition visits with the child, maybe doing a week on and week off throughout the summer. Or um, The mother's going to graduate or propose to graduate July 1st, and the mother has had instability, and I would like to see that the mother can cr create a stable environment on her own outside the, outside the facility before we cut off all contact. Not that we were going to cut off all contact with Ms. Valentine, but before we extinguish this dependency case. Um, so I'd like to do week on, week off. Let um, the mother graduate from the uh, facility July 1st, come back at the end of July prior to the child starting school, and see where we are and see how the mother's done, at least for the month of July, at creating a stable environment for herself. And um, so I called yesterday when I was thinking about this, I called Ms. Brandon, who is the child's therapist that testified yesterday and discussed this proposal with Ms. Brandon. And she, she was fine with the proposal. I just didn't want to do anything outside his therapeutic, um, what, what he's going through therapeutically now. And as she had testified to yesterday, she can do either do him in, you know, in her office or telehealth if that's what she needs to do throughout the summer. But I had discussed this with her yesterday. I'd also called to talk to the child yesterday, but Ms. Valentine was quick on the draw and had already gotten him back to school. But I told her if he had anything that he needed to discuss with me just to have him have him call me. And I think I think all that's OK. And I excused him for today. Your Honor, um, as to the the recommendation of the guardian ad litem, I wasn't aware of that previously. Um, and obviously we were I was also not I was not at all clear that we were only scheduled for an hour yesterday. So I, I apologize if that was in some paperwork that I did not read correctly. But um, I know that Marcus is scheduled for a pre-K summer program for all of the kids in his uh, special um, ESE, whatever that stands for, class. Um, Ms. Valentine had said it's, it's for the month of June. I believe it doesn't, it's over by July 1st though. Um, so that timing may work out better. Um, and we're, and Ms. Valentine is very much wanting Ms. Rodriguez to succeed. And um, I don't know if we're doing closing at this point or if we wanted to hold off on that. I just wanted to make sure that the, well, the summer school doing. was mentioned. Uh, I don't understand. What was your, what was it sounded like a complaint that you didn't know she, you didn't know what her recommendation was going to be. I, that's not how we do it here. <laughs> no, well, I, I mostly just wanted to make sure that we had given the input that the school, child schedule for summer school is not that he's open for, or like he's, he's planning to be in school for the summer for yeah, at least he, a month He's not going to be all. in school for the summer because he's going to be spending a lot of time with mom. That may have to change. Okay. I, want, I just wanted the court to have that information, Your Honor. Thank you. And I'm glad you let us know that. But um I don't think I, I don't find what she's recommended unreasonable because I, that was almost what I was going to tell you I was going to do. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't check with Miss Valentine when I was thinking about this, Miss Pulse. What I do is just kind of listen to the testimony and come up with my recommendation as we go. And when I talked to Miss Valentine about talking to the child yesterday, I didn't even think to ask about any summer school. So I, I didn't take that into my consider, into consideration. Okay. All, all that will do is just push us further down the road and we're not going to do that. 
And I think that that is that the early entry to kindergarten program that she's speaking of, and that program is available also um, in any uh, school. Um, and this in the, in my client's particular case, it is available um, at the um, Carter School that she was speaking of. So it would be something that would be available if the court was inclined to allow her to um, have the child during the summer. Um, that program is available there. So um, our proposal. You know, and I'm probably going outside. I know my client wants her son back uh, right now. We did talk about that the court usually transitions and that transition period period might look like um, additional weekends and things of that nature. And then when the child is out of school at the end of May, then looking at um, a more full time basis um, that the court has done that in the past. So she's aware that that could possibly be the situation. And uh, of course, we would ask the court that if the court cannot return the child today, that you allow the transition to be that she receives the child on the weekends and that um, at the end of May, even though he's in pre-K, it's not, you know, a, an educational program like kindergarten that we would um, necessarily be looking at um, that type of program, um, albeit it would be beneficial for him to uh, go into the program with her. Uh, he could go into their early education program that they're talking about um, instead of doing that in Henry County, to do that in Big County where she resides. So that would be our, um, that would be our ask at this time if the court is not inclined to return the child. And Your Honor, I guess my concern would be, I'm not sure if there is an enrollment deadline for the summer program. I believe Ms. Valentine had to get him enrolled um, this month for the schooling here for the summer. Um, well, why, why would she be enrolling him in a summer program when she knew we were coming to court about when the child would be going back home with mom? That seems a little presumptuous on my part. Well, it's more, it can be undone. What I'm, it's that it can be undone and she could unenroll him. I'm just not sure if it could be enrolled in the school down there if they have deadlines or not. I'm not saying that she's trying to do what she believes is, is best going forward. And the plan she's got right now is that she has him until told otherwise by the court. And so she's, school plans have to be made quite early. I know I have friends who've had to start summer program camps enrollment in February. So that's, that's how summer school works with kids these days is that they, they have to be enrolled early. Um, and make those plans far, far in advance. It's not saying that she was assuming she was going to have him, but she couldn't assume she wasn't going to have him either and then still have an adequate plan for the summer. So that's that's what we're looking at, Your Honor. Um, I mean, I guess our, um, our, I understand the court is leaning towards a transition period and absolutely understand that. Um, our position would be that she has not maintained stable residence and stable employment for a period of six months. Um, and that's why we're going to do a transition because she, you're right, she has not completed all of the reunification case plan. Right. Okay. I understand yeah. that. Um, there's some mitigating circumstances as to why she hasn't. And um, I'm, I'm satisfied she's made progress sufficient that we should start transitioning. What I can, you know, and what I can say, I just want to make sure that he's getting the right stability in that transition. And I'm not sure if we're looking at like a week on week off program. Um, I'm not sure if the school could dual enroll him where he's doing a week at the school in Henry and a week at the school in Bibb. I don't know that that's something that's possible. Um, I mean, and Ms. Valentine is absolutely can do the weekend visitations while he's in summer school and then July 1st move to a week on week off. Um, if that's, you know, because yeah, I think the transitioning does make sense. And I understand the courts and the guardian of Biden's position. But given the, the therapist's strong concerns about his stability needs, um, he's, you know, right now he's, in, he's scheduled to be enrolled with the same teacher he's had for this school year in that uh, transition to kindergarten program. And he would be in, in front of this, you know, set up a stability point while he's doing that transitioning. And then we could look at the week on week off or whatever the court plans to do as far as a longer transition period. Um, in the meantime, you know, after he's done with that summer school preparation program, but um, that's, that's the only, I mean, you know, and I understand where the court is leaning. I understand that. Absolutely. It's just, uh, I'm not sure that the questions have been answered as far as the school enrollment. Can that happen that quickly? And could he be dual enrolled for a week on week off in Bibb County and Henry County, if it, that were to happen in June. Um, but I mean, that's simply the mom calling to the school, you know, tomorrow and finding out what that process looks like and, and if she can, what the enrollment period would be. I just, we don't have that information right now. That's all I was saying. I said, I guess I'm too old. We didn't have five-year-olds going to summer school. And I don't think that's as important as reunifying this family if it's going to be reunified. So I'm not going to lose any sleep if he ends up not being in summer school because we're trying to transition the child back to his custodial parent. And I'm sorry, we all will just have to agree to disagree about the relative importance of a five-year-old being in summer school program that I think is more for daycare than for educational purposes, but be that as it may, what I'm going to let you do, I already had in my mind a transition probably that was a little different than what Ms. Miller say, st stated. 
this lady's graduating from this program July 1, so if it, things go like to suit. So I plan to come back in July to see if she, in fact, graduated and what she's doing about employment. I, surely to God, those people, when you graduate and they let you live there for up to three months, let you go get a job, don't they? They're not going to make you still sit around in classes all day, are they? No, no. I um, I believe she said I could actually start applying for jobs about a week prior to graduation. Yeah, because the date I give you to come back to see me, you better have a job. Yes, John. Doing something. I don't care. I mean, obviously, you, you need to make enough money to support yourself. And, um, you know, it, it, I'm concerned, um, Ms. Rodriguez, that you're talking about moving. And um, I normally, normally, I'm not all that concerned about people moving. But here, one of the biggies in your case has been the lack of stability, not just mentally, uh, drug and alcohol wise, but this kid having some place to call home at the same place long enough to know that it's his home. And um, if you're going to fly out of that um, rescue mission and run up the highway two weeks after graduation, you're not running out for him. Okay. Okay. I want to see you in a place that he can call home that he knows is his home before you hit the road. I'm not into keeping people prisoner in Georgia. I don't, it doesn't matter, but I want you to show me that you've settled down, that you've learned some coping skills, that you've learned some, this child is not, he's more of a five-year-old Dennis the Menace, the way I've heard, than he is a calm, cool, sedate. We don't have too many of those five-year-olds anymore, I don't think, but that is a load for you to take on when you're still working on improving your own skills. So I'm, you know, this case isn't gonna be over Anytime soon, even when the child comes home, we're going to do some follow up monitoring and making sure. But um, I'm not expecting you to win mother of the year before I let the child go back to you. But I expect you to show some stability. And that means a job and a place to call home. And I, I, I appreciate all the stuff that uh, Rescue Mission does. But I'm afraid that the way they run the program and the, I, just the way the limited information I have has sort of stymied you from being able to go ahead and show that you have some independent skills to, to do uh, rather than wait till after you graduate. And then we're sitting here. Now you've got to show me after you graduate that you can be stable and um, living arrangements, sec financial security, and all those things. Okay. But you've got, you've tell me you've gotten uh, positive <clears throat> results out of that program. So I can't knock it. Okay. And I'm not intending, I'm not, it's not intended as criticism of the program. It's just a different kind of program and it's, uh, it's what it is. But um, I don't have any doubt that you put your mind to it and show me the skills that you've told me you've learned. And um, I think you're capable of doing that, been terribly stable. Um, and this child has suffered some, and I think you have suffered considerably um, because of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Ms. Miller send me a proposed order based on her recommendation and let y'all look at it and y'all can give me your two cents worth. What I can tell you what I was looking at was to increase the number of weekend visits until whatever his regular school period is, which I assume is over the end of May or the first of June. And then we were going to have some week-long visits with mom down in Macon. And if the summer school has to go by the wayside, I don't have any problems with working it out and going to two different schools, but I'm I think the reunification is more important than summer school. This, if this was our 10th grader, that might be different. But um, Judge, if I could ask if mom and Ms. Valentine could at least both send me email to me the school schedule so that I could take that into consideration for the court if, if to see what, what would be available to work out, maybe going to two schools, what the school sessions would be for both Bibb County and Henry County. At least I can give that in the proposed order for the court. And if there are any other scheduling issues like came up yesterday where some the Ms. Valentine could not get the child to the visit at the time that the court said they were to do it. And that could have been addressed by bringing it back to court and explaining that and having it modified instead. They just took it upon themselves to change the order essentially. And um, I didn't like that. And, um, but I understand people have, those are very standard weekend visit times from six to six. And um, we're all creatures of habit, including judges. And um, if someone had explained to me um, why that needed to deviate, we probably could have deviated it. But um, so if there are any issues like that, then y'all need to let Ms. Miller know. I will say that the attorneys had just tried to discuss Ms. Valentine's problem. We we were all aware that she was having problem with the time. And we had discussed it with Ms. Battle and Ms. Pulse and I and tried to come up with a solution too, Judge. We just, none of us, we were all remiss in bringing it back to the court to, to modify it. So that was sort of a discussion that we just let 
that we didn't resolve. I, 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 yeah, when, when it was set, it was, uh, you know, we had that discussion, but it was a, uh, it's three visits. Let's, you know, let's get through these three visits and then come back to court. And then obviously it turned into more than, more than three months, uh, just with scheduling and rescheduling. And that's, so that's, that's why we didn't ask to bring it back to court. Cause we thought it was just, just three visits and we could handle it and then come back to the court at the proper, at the next schedule time. Uh, listen, I'm not looking for extra business, so I, I'm, <laughs> but you know, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say anymore. It's just, I'm okay. I'm not. I'm not holding that against the lawyers or the parties. I just was, I was concerned about it because it, it left the impression to somebody on the outside looking in that, that it just, it just didn't look right. Um, and it's not that they didn't, they didn't need to be adjusted. They probably did. But um, anyway, that's, that's over the dam. Can uh, we get a review? Can I get the review date? Put that in the order, Judge? Do we have one? I asked her to get me one in July, but it's looking at July the 18th. If we're able to start the longer transition visits in July, I want enough of it to go on to know what's how it's going. If we do it in the middle of July, we're not going to have had more than if I do it the way I was suggesting and the way I was looking at a week here and a week there, uh, we won't see but one week. So how about August the 1st? Um, Judge, that's fine. Just keep in mind, um, I know school starts. Uh, August the third is. Isn't it? I was going to say second. Quick check. It looks like it's after August. It is not August the first. August second. second? Okay, that's what I've got okay. um, on a Google search. So that would at least keep us before school starts, but uh, close. Miss Paulus, you said something about you didn't know we had but an hour yesterday. I don't. Are you saying you haven't had enough time to present your case? I. Uh, there are other things I would have presented, but at this point, I. I think that. Um, but, but you had we. You're here today to finish. You didn't present anything else. What What else would you present? I mean, we're here till the till doomsday today. There is no <laughs> limit today. I've got a Zoom uh, meeting with my accountability courts people at six, but uh, other than that, I uh, I had been expecting to go as the uh, the second second uh, case since it was uh, Ms. Rodriguez's motion that we would be presenting uh, the second half of it. And so our our evidence had closed yesterday, so I had not asked about reopening it uh, once we finished with the Ms. Rodriguez's testimony and. and her, her side of the case. And um, I'm not sure at this point that we've got a lot that would have changed where, where the court is leaning. Um, but yeah, I know there was, there was other information that we were heading towards. Um, well, if you got it, give it to me now. I don't know. How, there's no way I can say if it make a difference till I know what it is, but I had no, I, I thought I, you started, not, I guess then, I, she, then she got her side. Then you got the last side of rebuttal. You didn't, and you didn't put anything else up. I had no idea. You thought you, until you said that, I said, Man, we've had a um, two hours, and um, that's a long hearing for me. But I've had cases that went to one in the morning, so um, I want people to have their day in court. And, I, yeah. well, and I just, yeah, it, I make obviously it. not. Go ahead. I was going to say I generally have to make an objection because you know any evidence that was presented had an opportunity to present a case yesterday. And, uh, well, in I, fairness to to oh. her, I, I guess you were here the last time we had this case, right? I was here in December. I don't remember you really. So I mean, I remember these parties and I remember the case, but I don't remember you specifically. But you know, these ladies come in front of me almost every day, and you don't. So I mean, I don't really realize. I don't think of what we do as being out of the norm in terms of how we schedule cases, and we. Um, but uh, with doing them on Zoom, we have we have to block off time, or I'd be sitting all day doing nothing, and. Um, but um, so is there something else you want me to hear? Um, the concerns we have, Your Honor, is just that, that he's in special education. So I think there we you know, our position would be that he's got more educational needs than just summer school. But I also understand the court's feelings yeah. on summer school. And I, I, I get understand that. He's, he's got issues, but he's going to have yeah. issues the rest of his life. And I'm just, you know, when I have to weigh uh, the importance of the mandate by law that I have to reunify people sooner than later families and, and keep them connected. Then, um, uh, there's a few program for a five year old. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> you can you can tell me all the special needs. And I know he has special needs. I've heard enough described about him to know he has needs over and above to the extent there's ever any normal child anymore. I don't know that yeah. there is. Um, I, there are some logistical things that we were trying to get addressed that we needed some some assistance with. Um, his uh, Ms. Rodriguez had done a forwarding for her name and somehow Marcus's name got attached to that because he's got the same last name. And because it's being forwarded to a facility, um, Ms. Valentine can't change it to, for Marcus's mail to come to her. And so 
his insurance cards, his Medicaid card got returned to Medicaid as undeliverable because it got forwarded and bounced or something. And so she doesn't have a Medicaid card for the child right now. Um, and it's one of those things that I think, I'm not sure that Melissa, Ms. Rodriguez herself could even fix without the help of the facility, but her, the address change needs to be put in that Marcus Rodriguez mail does not go to the facility. Uh, it's, this sounds like a U.S. Postal Service thing. What are you talking about? The, the rescue mission. Because it's oh, a business, oh. not, a, not a home, mm -hmm. the facility, the rescue mission itself has to change the address now. Um, and so that's what my understanding is what's how it's been explained to Ms. Valentine is that she's never, she's not going to get mail addressed to Marcus if they decide to forward it um, because it was forwarded to the rescue mission. And the Medicaid paperwork is being, I think, has a do not forward restriction on it. So it's not getting to Ms. Rodriguez and it's not getting to Ms. Valentine. So there's <laughs> there's no insurance card in either person's hand for... Um, so it's not getting to the mission. It's not getting to the mission because it's not supposed to be forwarded. Um, and that forwarding can't be undone except by the mission. Um, and I, I believe as Valentine and Ms. Rodriguez had sort of discussed that, but it sounds like it was also sort of an administrative challenge. Um, and then the other thing is that Marcus is back. It's a long time and I've never had something, although I, <laughs> I have to say, I don't think I've ever had anybody at the rescue mission, but I've never had anybody have problems with the mail like that. I've never even heard of such a thing. But I know that. Ms. Valentine's gone back and forth with the post office so many times. I'm, I'm, um, well, that, you don't, you don't have to tell me anything <laughs> about the post office I, that I don't, I right. Don't think we already know. Uh, right. Right. But that's, that's what she has, how it's been explained to her is that the rescue mission has to do a change of address form for Marcus Rodriguez mail to go back uh, to, to be going to. Is, what you do is you put, you, when Ms. Miller sends you her proposal and you may want to go ahead and send her some language, but I don't see any problem with putting language that, both parties have to cooperate, sign such documents needed, and submit such information needed to facilitate the Medicaid card getting to Ms. Valentine sooner than later. I don't, I don't mean to mm -hmm. use that word, but I don't know, you know, expeditiously, um, even if it means that my, if Ms. Uh, Rodriguez, if you ultimately get your hands on the Medicaid card, you need to immediately give it to Ms. Rodriguez until custody has been restored, I mean, to Ms. Valentine and still, until custody has been restored because she's the one who needs it, not you. I mean, you make a copy of it and keep it so you'll have the Medicaid number, but she needs the card. But I, I don't understand if you're already getting services and your provider's already have his Medicaid information, why do you need the card? He's not able to see anybody new. So uh, there's been some concern about some um, skin bumps and she wanted to take him to a dermatologist right. and they can't take him to anybody new without the physical card. And we don't believe that Ms. Rodriguez got the card either. It's, we're not saying that at all. No. It's that it's just sort of gone back into the Medicaid mail ether. Uh, such as it is. So, um, just, so that's everybody needs to cooperate no, in getting that whatever needs to happen. No, and and the postal service sent sent his initial physical the the back pay check for social security, which has Marcus with Ms. Valentine as rep payee. They forwarded that to the rescue mission as well, and the two of them worked that out. But that's mm -hmm. obviously there's a U.S. Postal Service. Uh, as much as we can do to try to prevent mail hiccups would be appreciated. Um, and then the court last in December had stated when the back pay check came that. Uh, the payments, any payments from before December of 2022 had to be held in a special account. Uh, and so that has been done. Uh, you had said that Ms. Valentine could use checks from December forward for Marcus's expenses. Um, but she has that June and November money sitting in an account. And I believe it's around $1,900. And I believe he's got more back pay money that he is entitled to, but they will not release it until his account has been spent down to under nine, under $2,000, uh, including the money that they would be sending, I believe. Um I, she had done an expense spreadsheet just showing, you know, the housing, food, clothing, transportation, all of that costs that we would have presented to the court. Um, and she's been using the money for his for his stuff. Um, you know, he's got she's he's got therapy needs and transportation costs and all of that that are above and beyond, uh, you know, the kids that she's got already. So that's what she's been using for. And she's got a debit card. So she's been using all of his expenses on his debit card. Um, but we needed we would need to have, I guess, permission to or some sort of determination on spending of that June to November money, which is all time that she, he was living in, she and Ms. Rodriguez and Marcus were both living in her house from uh, March of last year, May of last year, was it Ms. Valentine? I'm sorry. What month yeah. was it? May. It was May. Um, and so the application was done in June. And then uh, Ms. Rodriguez went into the, the rescue mission in late June. Um, so it's the June to November money that you had ordered her to hold and trust uh, in a separate account and she has done you so. You and Ms. Evans Battle get together and come up with a, a joint proposal of what to do with that money and you put oh. it in a consent order and I'll sign it. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'll just tell you right off, I, you know, 
I thought the court had already addressed that issue. And then on top of it, um, Ms. Valentine filed for support, which my client is paying. So she's getting that money plus the child support as it is. Um, and she would really have to show some extraordinary expenses because um, I, right now, I don't, I don't see where she would have any extraordinary expenses for Marcus. If she's getting Medicaid, he's been that's paying for his medical expenses. Um, well, y'all just look at it and let me know what you worked out or what you didn't work out. And yes. then I'll work it out. Yes, sir. The uh, checks, you had specifically said, hold on any decision on the June and November checks when they, they come in. Just, he's got more money that he can get if that other money is spent down in his interest. So, But it, it'll be there whenever this is um, pulled down? It's apparently six months from the initial payment, which was in December, I believe, no, early January, somewhere right around the new year. The first check came and then there's another one coming six months down the line. So I think we're talking Memorial Day-ish, if I'm not, you can nod if I'm correct, right, <laughs> Ms. Valentine? The um, arrears check was until December and they said around <laughs> the beginning of May, I'll be getting paperwork to show and explain where that those arrears money went because they will not release his second check, which is for the other months, because that first check was only partial. It was just for August, September, October, I believe. Um, and they won't release the other check until the other money is spent down. I don't know. So what is that check for even further back? Yes, because okay. if he well, was- why, That money it, should go to the mother, wouldn't you think? Well, he applied for it in May. He didn't start, like they're not counting him receiving until June. And but then, but it would go back to the person who had him at the time, which would be the mom, wouldn't it? I mean, I had, I technically had him because they were both living in my home. Oh, I, I thought was, that was when she said the second period it was when they were no, living. She with applied for Social Security in my home. Okay. So ever since she did the initial application, they were both living in my home. Yeah, no, the, I believe the, the, the application was completed uh, with Ms. Valentine supplying paperwork while Ms. Rodriguez was in the rescue mission. Uh, so the, the paperwork was actually finished by Ms. Valentine. When are, they, so was, when are they backdating the start of the disability? I thought, and this is SSI, I think, and I, SSI, you can't go back beyond the date of the application, I thought. Right, and that was after they moved in with Ms. Valentine. The, the application was done after they moved in and they were residing with Ms. Valentine. And I think it was less than a month later that Ms. Rodriguez went into the rescue mission. So what's the back pay for? What period of time? If, if it's June back- to December, and I think we can get... Uh, I haven't seen the exact paperwork or what the first check is for versus the second check that's in being held, uh, what periods it was. So um, if that, okay. am I losing you? No, I, I, for me to decide, I would need that information. So y'all can just, just copy everybody with that. Okay. It's fine with me. Okay. But y'all try to work it out. And if you don't, I will. Certainly. I have the paper in front of me if you want me to. We'll, we'll, yeah, no, we'll, we'll put it all together so that we're all looking at the same information together in a whole. Um, I think that'll be clearer for everyone. Okay. So, um, cause that was, those are the major points, just making sure that he's getting what he needs medically and financially, um, for that. And, um, if, yeah, we can talk, and Ms. Evans, we can obviously talk about the child support order. If it didn't factor, I didn't see anything about what did or didn't get factored into the child support case out of Bibb County. Cause that doesn't sound like the math was done properly. We can talk about that. Um, can I just say also there, um, he is due for a review of benefits with Social Security as well. So they go over his situation if he's still in, at the same residence, um, if he does get any outside money or anything like that. Being that now he did start getting child support this month, that will also decrease his amount of Social Security benefits that he gets every month. Well, and we need to look through the child support. Ms. Evans Battle, I don't know if you've gotten the child support worksheet. I have not seen it, so I don't know. Let's. We need to talk through that and figure that out because it would sort of be a circular <laughs> financial thing um if we're looking yeah we can talk about that outside of court time at this point, given it's 5 40 anything else that All was right. those I'll are our, our points i'll look to hear from y'all thank you for your time thank and you thank y'all for caring about and looking after marcus he sounds like an interesting young man thank you take care thank you, All right. thank thank you. Judge.